There are about five to six black salons and barber shops in the Cedar Rapids area. Among them, Frida's Beauty Rama is the oldest standing black business in Cedar Rapids and one of the oldest in the state. Frida Long opened her first shop in the late 1960s and in 1988, relocated to 12th Avenue, where it still stands today. I tried to get into Paris Academy in Cedar Rapids, but they didn't accept black people. And so I had to leave and go to the Des Moines to a black beauty school. Frida has accomplished a long list of accolades over the years, including meeting Joe Lewis and doing hair for Little Richard. Just so I can move around a little bit, I'll come in some Fridays and do one or two heads with the senior citizens. I always jokingly say she still does it so that she can pick up on the gossip still down in uh, the old neighborhood. So we used to hang out at Frida's shop when we were kids and then eventually went and got my license and uh, started working for Frida. She used to do my grandmother's hair, all of my uh, friends' hair, Sonny Butler, Anthony Arrington. Um, Frida's late husband used to cut my hair when I was a kid. Um, those are my first experiences coming to the barber shop with Frida and my grandma. Frida purchased the building and the land it sits on, as well as the land next door to it, which served as a parking lot, and she also allowed the community to use it for such events like fundraising. Frida is uh, the main pillar who used to keep us out of trouble. She used to straighten us up when we were getting out of line, and, and our grandmas and mothers didn't even have to be around. Through the years, as she has gotten older, the building is in a little disrepair, and some things have started to happen. And so we started to look at what we could do for financing. We've gotten situations where they said, okay, well, you fill this paper out, you do this, you turn it in, and we'll, we, we'll have the grant money for you. That grant money is available, and it goes into a black hole. She's got all kinds of documentation. She's been in the newspaper and everything else for being a historic building in Cedar Rapids. Um, but for some reason, they don't seem to be able to support remodeling and redoing this historical building. To be able to continue a black business in Cedar Rapids in that area, I think is extremely important. My niece Octavia is, is also, um, had gone to school, was mentored by my mom, and uh, it is being handed off. I grew up in here, so I sat here every day and watched everybody do hair. My plan was, I always wanted to go to school and be like my grandma. My husband had four strokes, and it was pretty hard trying to keep up him, this place, and my house. A lot of the people asking me to not give up. As a kid, I've watched her fight through many of the challenges that have happened for black businesses during the earlier days. She just doesn't have that fight anymore. You know, we've had contractors that have come in that have funded other businesses throughout the Nubo community, um, but then they tended to just kind of fade off. Seeing the funding that has gone into other properties in the Nubo area and why they wouldn't do with the same enthusiasm that they had on some of these older buildings. They ought to label that building a historic landmark like they just did the Harris's. That's how important she is to this community. She had a bat. It was She never used it, <laughs> but it was always like a scolding, don't cuss in my shop and act accordingly or I'm going to get you. You know, there, there's got to be plenty of people that would step up if you create a, if there was some sort of fundraising campaign. Has she ever, I don't even know if she's ever, ever asked. She hasn't. Proud black woman, <laughs> proud black woman, huh? So I'm a this for it. Yeah. I want to continue to educate and continue this place and make it feel like home for people, like it used to be.